The game of the art scene is changing, and we'll show you why today on The Express. Each piece consists of three artists working not collaboratively to create the individual pieces. On today's show, Poco's puzzling new exhibit, The Game. So that you would create the head, and then another person, the torso, and another person, the bottom part of the body, the legs or the feet. Get them in there. <laughs> the feminine side of French food. Vive la France. The Hope and Shadows contest has changed the way people see our community. Vancouver's Hope in Shadows project. Not only brings the community together, but it brings people from the outside. If you're not paying attention, so we were talking the whole time, and you just end up going around in circles and circles and circles. Conquering a complex corn maze. Extremely good fun, and I think the kids love it. See that and more local expression. Welcome to The Express, I'm Johanna Ward. Today's show is all about community, from the art scene here at Poco's Lee Square, to a family corn maze on Vancouver Island, to a calendar launch on the downtown east side. But up first, we meet a woman who knows all about the importance of connecting community. Good Karma introduces us to a Richmond Food Bank super volunteer. <laughs> It's another busy day at the Richmond Food Bank and Weimar is busy putting together healthy snack packs for school-aged kids. Well, I hear that when they get them, they open the bag right away sometimes. Vi has been a food bank volunteer since 1983 when she retired from her job as a registered nurse. I felt I'd like to do, keep on doing something to keep active for one thing. And then I felt that uh, this helped because the food bank has just started. And the need for the food bank in Richmond has grown. It now serves about 1,500 people a week, something that wouldn't be possible without people like Phi. Volunteers are critical. We have about 125 regular volunteers. That's people who come in every week for a day or two days, or two half days. Uh, many of our volunteers are seniors. Many have disabilities. Vi comes in about once a week. She's a busy woman. At 86, she volunteers three to four days a week for the food bank and other community groups in Richmond. It's good to keep active. Otherwise, if you just think of your own health and think of your own illnesses, you vegetate. She was a teaching nurse, so she's, she's got the, I think she has the teacher's genes, you know, and so she really enjoys being able to uh, help people. I describe her as an extraordinary person. Uh, she's in her late 80s, I believe, and she's been volunteering here for many, many years. She never, never talks about her health, never, never down. She's always, you know, happy, you know, glad to be here. Just an extraordinary person. The Richmond Food Bank couldn't exist without the help of the volunteers. The work they do is essential for us to be able to perform our service. I'm Erin Shaw in Richmond for The Express. The Richmond Food Bank serves about 300 families per week. And if you check out togetherisamazing.com, you can learn more about Shaw's goal to fill food banks across the country. But right now on The Express, we have an example of Together is Amazing from the art world. This is a touring exhibit called The Game that's making people look twice or even three times at Poco's Lee Square. There's over 50 artists that have contributed to the exhibit overall, but each piece consists of three artists working not collaboratively. This is one of the ones that I'm involved in. It was just serendipity that two of us were going on a fishy aquatic theme, and then the head just seemed to fit so perfectly. It, it just all fit together. It's a pretty amazing exhibit. How did it feel to see your piece come together with the other two artists? Oh, it was so exciting to get together and actually put your head or your body or your legs together with the other artists you'd work for. You had no idea what each other was doing, so that the end results were fantastic. This particular show I love because 
It takes pieces from many different artists and brings them together, which is kind of what the Friends of Lee Square does. Our purpose is to foster the arts and culture in our community. We are the Surface Design Association of British Columbia and the Yukon, but we are part of a large national, international organization of surface designers. This is all made out yeah, of gut it? and seaweed. Gut? Gut. Yeah, don't even go. <laughs> like gut from what? <laughs> sausage casing. Oh, you know, okay, that wow. that kind of a, of a thing, yeah. It's and amazing that the face is so expressive. It is, isn't it? The, the body is, is woven twigs and willow, and then the legs are textile. It's just really a fun exhibit. I haven't seen anybody that hasn't come in here and just been blown away. This is a fabulous venue and an opportunity for people in our community to participate in many ways, not just as an artist. The game runs until November the 7th here at Poco's Lee Square. And later on the show, we'll show you another exhibit they have called Slice. It was inspired by the game, but it was developed independently. Now, right now, we have a story that's keeping with our arts and community theme, and the name says it all, Hope in Shadows. The bleak images people have long associated with the downtown east side have been replaced by pictures of hope, joy, and love, thanks to the Hope in Shadows calendar. Open Shadows contest has changed the way people see our community. 16-year-old Alicia Walker, who's lived in the downtown east side all of her life, is one of the 200 residents who was given a camera to take photos of the neighborhood. When the calendar first came out, I thought that it was just going to be a contest for fun, but when I saw that so many people were impacted by it, so many people felt like they had a purpose in giving us a chance to shine. Today she's getting an award for this photo, a picture she took of her sister and a friend. I wanted it to be in the center of what I think what I think the center of the downtown east side is, which is Oppenheimer Park. And they were kind of walking, holding hands, and they're really good friends, and I thought that that is something that really represents community. It gives people a lot of pride, a lot of confidence in themselves and also in their community. The winner is Peter Thompson for I Can Make a Difference. The cover of this year's calendar comes from a street vendor who used his nephew as inspiration. He was all excited when I told him that he was invited and that he would probably win. He set it up with a, with a really nice message, I can make a difference. Not only brings the community together, but it brings people from the outside, like the, to know the, the people from downtown inside, what they're like and how they help each other. 50% of their sale price goes to the calendar vendors, which is really helpful to a lot of these people, the homeless, low-income people. Almost 200 people will receive sales training over the next month and will be out on the streets selling the calendars until Christmas. I'm Bianca Salterbeck in Vancouver for The Express. Last year, street vendors sold over 12,000 calendars between October and Christmas. And also, more than 230 people were trained in sales, marketing, and budgeting through the street vendor program. You're watching The Express, and we have more feel-good and fun stories coming up. After the break... Typically, you can't even remember which way you went to get in, so you go backtracking over the same path you just went on. Fall fun on Vancouver Island. This is my third year actually coming. It was a great time. It takes pieces from many different artists and brings them together. Slice at Poco's Lee Square. Our purpose is to foster the arts and culture in our community. You're watching local TV on The Express.